So welcome to the September 9th, 2020 meeting of the Kubernetes IoT Edge Working Group. Um, in today's meeting, we're going to have a presentation on a crano by uh, Tina, and we may have a few other people pop in with um, uh, unplanned agenda items. So that said, if you want to start, Tina, go ahead. Thank you, Steve. Let's see, share my screen. It says host disabled participant screen sharing. Steve, I think you should do that. You're the host. You're on mute. Let me try one more time. Now it seems I can. Okay, cool. Uh, hello everyone, this is Tina Zhou, uh, the TSC co-chair of Equino. I'm happy to share with you the Equino Ready 3 update. So uh, Equino Ready 3, the slogan is to unify the LF Edge with Blueprints and Calco Edge software. So um, today we can talk about uh, LF Edge overview, momentum, and the recent news coverage and uh, some background and R3 summary for Equino. If we have time and you're interested, I can share some details of R3 blueprints and use cases, and also give you some details of the commercial ecosystem adoption. So um, overview, um, today the uh, edge computing is hot. Uh, all the way covers from the user edge to the service provider edge, with the dedicated operated to the shared XAS. Um, we have uh, the application and infrastructure on the other side from um, through the vertical things. And uh, you can see the Elf Edge project actually covers um, all of this. And we have uh, different stages of uh, uh, projects like Equino is at the impact of project which is the highest uh, stage of uh, the project's life cycle. And the LF Edge uh, has the end-to-end -end context. The, it's deployment ready open source, include the use case of enterprise, cross the device edge, then we have the home edge, Eve there, going through the infrastructure edge and all the way to the cloud and the core. So we work together with different uh, organizations like um, um, Kubernetes and uh, CNCF, ONAP, <clears throat> Archimedes AI, uh, all kind of them, Etsy Mac. So uh, we are doing a closed loop from products to deployment and we get the profit. But the beginning was the project. Okay. So uh, this is a busy slide from the previous edge, uh, previous page, you can see we have some um, <clears throat> telco edge blueprints like a radio edge cloud, uh, network cloud, some vertical edge application blueprints like uh, we have connected vehicle, the AR uh, classroom, AR VR classroom, and also the enterprise edge cloud automation blueprint like ICN, and KNI provider access edge is led by Red Hat and private LTE, et cetera. <clears throat> we also have some IIoT, uh, which has the IIoT um, workload on top of it, like the uh, predictive um, and condition-based monitoring and uh, for the transformers, pumps, and the TensorFlow machine learning for the edge apps. So uh, we are working on that. The LF Edge summary, um, maybe you can find the logos from your company. Uh, there are many uh, premium members and many of them are um, very active in Equino, like 73% uh, of them, yeah. Um, you can see uh, the Equino Blueprint has more than 30 blueprints uh, in development. And uh, there were 15,800 global mentions since launch of LFH. 
there are more than 25 global deployment and commercial products available today. Uh, at Queen Elizabeth III, uh, it was the, we have a half a year candidates and uh, but uh, you know the PI is a little bit always a little bit uh, later than the actual uh, release date. So August 12th, there was a PR uh, announcement. Uh, we have six new R3 blueprints, the total of 20, covering the use cases all the way across from uh, telco, enterprise, cloud, IoT, etc. And also this blueprint covers many areas, including Mac, AI, machine learning, cloud, connected vehicle, AR, VR, Android Cloud Native, Manix, um, the Android Cloud Native for Cloud Gaming, uh, Telco Core, and Open RAN uh, with ongoing support of uh, uh, R1, R2 blueprints and more. So we have we do have some open edge API specifications to standardize across devices, applications, cloud native orchestrations, and multi-cloud. Uh, I think uh, VMware contributed the multi-cloud part. <laughs> So uh, there were many coverage all the way from Fields Telecom, Light Reading, SDX, Center, SDN Lab, etc. And so let's have a close look at Equino, the new intelligent edge. So launch since 2018, Equino uh, continues to gain the community support and uh, um, for the creation of deployable edge solutions. There are more than 30 blueprints and it's globally adapted in commercial solutions to address different uh, edge use cases. So there were multiple community lab and uh, user labs to speed up the edge innovation. And as I said, we have new blueprints for deployment of R3 and also create a framework for the standardized uh, APIs. There are many tours. You can just uh, run the, um, the YAML file. You can run the scripts automatically to validate your blueprints, all the way from hardware, OS, virtualization, Docker, Kubernetes, and also the security scanning with uh, Linux and VARS and Kubi Hunter. Equino community has participated in different, um, uh, several industry, industry uh, us outreach events like the ONES, the Open Computing World, uh, these things. You can see uh, the global world, the continental map, how it looks like. Uh, the use cases cross IoT, private, uh, provider access edge, SD-WAN, uh, and edge media processing, and carrier edge media processing. There are 75% of, sorry, I was saying 73, actually 75% of Elf Edge premium member are active in Equino. There are more than 30, uh, 40 companies engaged across the globe. Um, this are uh, some of uh, the uh, active uh, contributions. You can see uh, who are active uh, contributions and lines of code in uh, the commit here. Um, the, this link has the, the real time one. This is some time ago. All right, so people may ask with a Crino blueprint. So you may have the blueprint from OpenStack, but the, this blueprint has specific meaning here. That means community integrated, tested, deployable, end to end edge step. <clears throat> For example, we got a use case of under cloud. Then we go to the community, do the fully CICD, and it's proven and tested by the community. And we have uh, community lifecycle support, similar to CNCF uh, from um, like uh, incubation uh, to mature to core and to maintenance, uh, which guarantee the production quality. All right, um, the green dot and blue dot here means, uh, the blue dot is the brand new R3 blueprint. The green one means it grows an enhanced R1, R2 blueprint. From the very far end, you can see the micro Mac. Uh, it's about in the light poles. Um, it's deployed in Finland. Uh, so for the smartest 5G road, 
and, and the IC type one is for some um, small board like gateways and the LED IoT gateway and UCPE is deployed in uh, like Russian Telecom, Telecom Malaysia, uh, Swisscom, France OBS, in uh, South Africa, Telecom, those companies. And going to the access edge, you can see the 5G Mac Cloud Gaming. Uh, China Unicorn, China, China Mobile provide 5G B2B services to Tencent, and Tencent provide the B2C services to the end users uh, for uh, cloud gaming, HD video, and live streaming. The 5G Mac Enterprise is the <clears throat> Closest the one to the Mac, it provides the MP1, MP3 interfaces, and it's very in line with the Edge Mac framework and the functionalities. The Telco Appliances Radio Edge Cloud Rack uh, is being uh, deployed in the Triad Zoom and the largest uh, uh, American operators. Uh, the AI Edge security has been deployed by Baidu in China for several cities. It's the uh, biggest city like Beijing, Hangzhou. Connected vehicle is being used by Tencent for their uh, connected vehicle networking with Dongfeng Group and BMW. And ICN uh, has been used by many places, mainly for the cloud native <coughs> and the uh, uh, hold on. Yeah. Okay, so everybody in my family has a Zoom meeting, has to close the door. Um, <clears throat> the IC type two to five, type two is for the edge server. Type three is for the Android cloud for cloud gaming, AIC. Uh, type four is for ARVR. Type 5 is for Smanix on the OBS DPDK. They have been deployed uh, in many hyperscalers, <coughs> and, uh, mainly in China and also as some um, North American companies. Uh, Network Cloud family uh, is being deployed in uh, AT&T's network. And KNI provide access edge. Uh, I think it's been deployed in France. Okay, so what's next for the second half of Equino? Uh, we are keep working to enhance the existing blueprint. With the there will be more new blueprints like public cloud edge interface. We work with Cindy. Cindy was in, in this call uh, from the Microsoft Azure IoT Edge uh, to work with like Equinix, AT&T for those telcos, and standardize the public cloud edge interface. <laughs> also for the Edge APIs and developer open Edge APIs, enhance the functionalities like the cloud native workloads and for the collaboration with the other Elf Edge projects, downstream and upstream community. We consider CNCF and uh, Kubernetes community is the upstream communities for us. Okay, uh, this uh, is put everything together. Uh, if we have time, I can go through some of the details of the new blueprint. How do you feel? Yeah, I think that would be good. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, so this one is new, the 5G Mac uh, slice system to support cloud gaming, HD video, and live broadcast. So the purpose and feature is like, um, you can see the purple one uh, is provided by China Unicorn and China Mobile, like uh, it's called, well, we call, call like a virtual central office, or we can call this as 5G core. And the green part is open source, the, um, developed by Tencent team. They have the edge connector and edge gateways. So, it is um, deployed close to the 4G, 5G network to perform the traffic steering, the local DNS service, and traffic management, et cetera. So cloud gaming is very uh, popular in Asia. And HD video and the live broadcasting, especially um, 
there are some gaming, they have a broadcasting. Well, a lot of people are watching how the other people are doing the game. Um, this, this is great uh, in deployment. And uh, this blue part, uh, we all get it from upstream community. Like uh, we have the Mac, Kubernetes plus container. It's all from the upstream. And this is Mac. So this is to you know California has the um the fire. It got me allergic. So um enables the new functionality and business model on the network edge. Uh, in Finland, there were many, like in winter, the icy road, and also the reindeer, like all of a sudden show by in the highway. So it can uh, collect this data and tell the cars, okay, okay, in front of like uh, how many um, meters ahead, there was a reindeer, please choose another route, something like this. And the use case has the uh, fixed installation as part of 5G and our base station, enables like AR, VR for this uh, is very low latency application and new services. This is an extension of the smart city deployment. Uh, the control software for this function will run on the UMAC. In the industry 4.0 use case, this called uh, MicroMac or UMAC is deployed as part of 5G network, will provide a platform for running service for the factory floor. So in a train, the UMAC can collect and store surveillance camera data for the later uploading. You can see they use a Kubernetes, uh, sorry, K3S container orchestrator. I think this is a new sandbox project here in uh, CNCF. All right. Um, so the air edge I mentioned about is to establishing a Mac platform combined with the AI capability at the edge. You can see this green card we took uh, Docker, Qatar, KVM uh, as part of the IAAS. Um, it's also open source by ByteDance over the edge, OTE IAS. For the past layer, it's a dark blue part uh, providing open APIs to connect with the Orange Pad OTE web portal. So the use case include like a smoke detection, the classroom concentration analysis, and the factory production safety, uh, the personal uh, equipment usage analysis, and the kitchen uh, hygiene monitoring. Uh, it's deployed uh, in several um, tier one cities in China. And this is uh, what I said, which is very in line with the uh, Mac. So the purpose features is to uh, provide a complete ecosystem for, um, for the enterprise application on the lightweight 5G telco edge. It can be leveraged by telco operators to provide the edge computing capability to its uh, uh, enterprise uh, users. So this is 2B case. Um, the use cases has three, like how to stream your media optimization to improve the uh, user experience in the machine vision on the campus network. This is also good for the uh, enterprise customer uh, for the centralized processing using wireless cameras. The last one is mobile office to reduce the overhead of the administration and provides quality uh, outdoor coverage. IEC Type 3, um, this is a very popular and hot industry in China uh, about the AIC Android in cloud. So it running on the ARM enabled uh, cloud architecture with GPU, vGPU, EC management. The ARM based the cloud games need basic cloud features. The use cases include Android cloud games. It's more for the hyperscaler, web scaler. And uh, also the ARVR Android applications needed by both telcos and the hyperscalers. 
Uh, SMANIC, this is uh, very specific for the hardware acceleration. Uh, you can see we have uh, two simple layers, the host layer and the SMANIC layers here. Uh, in the last release, we have done the OBS DBDK offload into SMANIC, uh, but we haven't fully done part of the UPF and the VPC functions. It's planning to implement the CT features in release four. Yeah, it's been deployed uh, uh, in China and Latin America. Okay, uh, for some existing R1, R2, this is enhancement. The connected vehicle, I said, uh, established the OSS Edge Mac platform for the V2X application development. Um, use cases include accurate location. This is 10 times improvement over GPS system and better smarter navigation for the real-time traffic info and safe drive improvement and the reduce, uh, reduce the traffic violation. All the purple part is provided by uh, originally the seed code is from Tencent running on the TARS uh, microservice framework and then the contributors all of the work they come and contribute a more enhancement on top of it. Uh, this ARVR oriented edge stack also runs on the task microservice framework. Uh, however, the use case and applications are different. Uh, you can see like today, many students and teachers, they have do the online education. So the virtual classroom front end for student and for teacher will play a very critical role here and we have uh, around the, uh, the back end uh, in the data center. So the use cases not only uh, include, now available is for the virtual classroom, but for the future uh, releases, they're working on the operation guidelines and sports live and gaming. Uh, this is about ICN. So ICN is to address overall challenges of edge deployment. Uh, providing the zero touch provisioning and Kubernetes uh, deployer, the CUDI is being containerized. And also uh, for the ONAP for Kubernetes, that enables net nested the Kubernetes uh, used to manage both on the cloud and over cloud. Uh, ANET has been uh, deployed uh, in many places. The, um, I think Ding probably can comment here. Uh, the purpose is to adjust IoT and UCP use cases. Uh, it's ready to support different IoT gateway use cases for edge computing. The video analyst uh, takes. Uh, also, I think they are discussing how to integrate uh, the, the uh, Eclipse. Now they already integrated the EdgeX framework and the portal for uh, IoT gateway and OPC UA test enabled on ALAT platform. This is a, a quite mature platform. The network cloud uh, uh, powered by Tencent Fabric. Tencent Fabric is here uh, as a single SDN. So um, with Tencent Fabric as a SDN controller, it can support CNI for Kubernetes and Neutron uh, plugin for OpenStack. The use cases include the support telco grade application and a wide variety of VNF and CNFs, offers advanced networking features like VRP, Tencent Fabric, service training, also enable the deployment of multiple remote edge sites from a single regional controller. So KNI, um, this, this work is led by colleagues from uh, Red Hat. So uh, purpose is to leverage the best practice and tools from Kubernetes community, uh, and also support both containerized and VM-based applications. I think OpenShift plays a critical role here. The use cases include lightweight self-managing cluster based on the core OS and Kubernetes. Support VMs uh, via Kubernetes, so uh, application lifecycle management using the operator framework, 
also support real-time workloads using center OSRT. So uh, this is, uh, I think, it's very close to what we have done in Kubernetes. We integrate everything. All right, the 5G ring, telco access, use case, radio edge, cloud. Uh, this one is uh, uh, very interesting. It, it provides the telco grade edge cloud platform for the near real-time container workloads. So integrated RIT. RIT enables the telcos to deploy the customizations in the form of like X apps. You can see X apps here that tailor the cell network for specialized needs of a customer's own industry. So it is uh, automated the CD pipeline for testing and also provide a regional controller uh, for the zero touch on this side, regional controller. Okay, uh, Cloud Blueprint still has the unicycle with Rover and SRLV. So originally it, it was the at and turn to have the uh, unicycle Rover. Uh, unicycle means a rack at the CO place has like six to seven servers. Uh, Rover means a far edge server, just one server uh, independently. So uh, they use the same, so, same set of uh, software framework to enable the hardware configuration and automated deployment of uh, multiple edge sites uh, from uh, a remote regional controller. So it's more for provisioning. Also support uh, a lot of uh, VNFs. I don't know, it's more than 100 or what's the exact number. Uh, also supports single server like Rover and multi-server like unicycle deployment. Uh, it uses to leverage the L-ship. Uh, so now we're waiting for the new uh, L-ship versions so uh, we can integrate and upgrade to the next level. All right, so this is Network Cloud Blueprint Unicycle with OBS DBDK. Um, this one is different. There's a joint committee effort by Ericsson and at t integration with a kind of feature project to add OBS DBDK support to L-ship distribution. Uh, the use case is to support VRAN and the 5G core telco grade applications. SIBA uh, is more for the GPON. Uh, cases, it's a control plan of uh, the, uh, the VOLT. So let's put it that way. Um, it provides an appliance tend to the support the ONF uh, SIBA as the, as the enable broadband access platform. Uh, the integration with the regional controller for zero touch, that's why SIBA uh, and REC actually under the telco appliance blueprint family. Because the button has the TA, has thousands of lines of code to do all the common things, and SIBA and REC in the future VDU, VCU will be just like appliance for telcos. Okay, this is IEC type one and two. Uh, it integrated many components from um, CNCF and provide um, edge stack to uh, both the small board and also at the edge server. Edge server is called two, type one, and type one is for small board. So the running environment deployment with multiple VNs and also based on Kubernetes and Catechol uh, supports telco edge applications and media edge cloud deployments with ARM and x86. Um, you may be wondering who are contributing to all of this great work. So we got the ANA networks um, and Baidu to provide and support the different blueprints and the proof of concept and deployment like the Air Edge by Baidu. And also China Mobile is more contributing to Smarnik, Android, and public cloud edge interface and have their uh, Falcon deployment in their network. Equinix is more interconnection uh, between uh, telcos and hyperscalers. In future way, we have, I think, things here. I think you can talk about the contribution for the Kubi Edge, edge service blueprint. 
in Edup. And Huawei has contribution to Edup and the Elt Edge, which is uh, in line with the Mac. Intel contributed to the uh, ICN, Edup, KNI, and the, uh, the, the robot taxi, uh, the autonomous uh, vehicle uh, blueprint. And Juniper pro, uh, contributed to the uh, Tencent Fabric blueprint, etc. Nokia uh, works on the RIC integration into Radio Edge Cloud for the ORAN uh, RIC in the live network using this Equino RIC uh, project and promoted the emerging ATMAG ecosystem and also uh, do the RAN uh, intelligent controller project uh, unitize the Nokia Airframe Open Edge server hardware. And NVIDIA provides all the uh, GPU we need, and also uh, NVIDIA actually has already acquired Mellanox. Mellanox is a great contributor to the uh, uh, Smarnik blueprints. They have been uh, deployed in um, um, the China telcos and uh, hyperscalers. They are also talking to uh, uh, hyperscaler in uh, North America, which is also the participants. And Tencent deployed the uh, uh, connected vehicle and AR, VR, and 5G Max sites in their networks. We bank uh, deployed the federated machine learning applications, which is part of the AI Edge Blueprint family. Uh, Wipro support the proof of concept on the KNI R2 release in the 5G lab. And uh, in summary, Equino is an edge project targeted to address telco enterprise and industry IoT use cases. There are four missions. One is to use blueprint to create end-to-end -end configuration for a particular ed edge use case, which is complete, tested, production deployable to meet the use case characteristics. And also for the future project is to leverage the upstream community work as much as possible to avoid any technical debts and work with the broader edge communities to standardize the edge APIs, like the upstream open source community co co coordination, like we have the IoT working group here. Um, encourage the vendors and other communities to validate their uh, edge applications and VNFs on top of the Equino blueprint. Uh, so that's why we have a user, user application group. Uh, okay, so the mission, we, we delivered a fully functional edge stack to unify the multiple sec sectors and deliver the tested deployment ready blueprint and create a framework for defining and standardizing these APIs. Uh, again, I wanna emphasize, we have this closed loop from development community technology to products that promote markets and have more participation back to the projects, uh, which is under an open and neutral governance. That's about it. I'm open for questions. So I've got one, Tina, just to clarify what the term blueprint means. I've, um, I've noticed that some parts of the uh, Crano slides give you choices as to different things like tungsten fabric for networking, or I think I saw some other slide that was using Calico, and which I think is an alternative. Are these blueprints like a tested scenario where you've made uh, opinionated choices on the technologies and proven that they work well, or is a blueprint something else? So a blueprint is more like a recipe. Like okay. for this, yeah, this recipe you have your favorite hamburger, and the other recipe is another fish hamburger, not the meat hamburger. But they all all belong to the same hamburger blueprint family. Does it make sense? I think so, uh, yeah. because there's some of these where you might have some choices. I mean. Even here, I saw for running container workloads that a Crano encompasses EdgeX Foundry, which uh -huh. would be one way to run containerized apps, and Kubernetes is an alternate one. Uh, am I right in understanding that a Crano just 
is designed to give you the option of choosing what's best for your use case? Yeah, so because uh, there's no one size fits all, different end users have different uh, use cases, but like we, we group them into eight blueprint families and 30 blueprints. So this is, you have a recipe book, you choose. Okay, and then if someone wants to, they can propose new blueprints too, I assume, uh, yeah. for new use cases, okay. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. The one observation I have is there's so much in here. I think I want a couple of weeks to go through all this to understand it because it's it it's pretty big in scope. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any recommendations for resources like um, where you'd get started on learning about this from a top level and then drilling down? Like maybe uh, videos or other presentations that got recorded? Um, uh, yeah, we have a recording of uh, uh, Equino webinar. I can send a link to you. And uh, I think for the for this group, I think this part are probably what you are focusing on, right? The IoT Edge Working Group. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we've got obviously a lot of people who are focused on Kubernetes as part of the solution. Um, we do have both I think telcos and industrial IOT people coming into this group with some regularity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another thing I'd like to ask is for me, one of the ways I like to learn things is to try to um, stand one up on my own, even if it isn't production grade. How feasible is it? What kind of hardware or infrastructure would you need to get a bare minimal Acrano uh, deployment off the ground to try it out and play with it. If you only have Raspberry Pi, try this Micro Mac. It's easy. We have a hacker song the other day. And you have, if you have a small IoT gateway, you can try IC Tech 1 and it at IoT gateway. It works fine. If you are lucky to have Edge server, all of this you can try. Yeah, depends on um, the size of the hardware, the memories, uh, what you have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when the when a crano runs these hackathons, are they part of conferences or uh, are they just generally open and online these days? Uh, last year, November, it was collocated with uh, uh, Kubicom in San Diego. Okay. So hosted by Qualcomm in San Diego at that time. So it was at the um, the CNCF webpage, yeah, for the day zero event. Mm -hmm. One question for you: uh, Your deck mentioned uh, an upcoming effort to standardize APIs and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I was wondering how you will make that happen given the number of projects and blueprints that, that you have, that's a lot of people potentially around the table. So I'm curious about what kind of process you have in place to, to try to standardize those, uh, those APIs and, and develop them. Yeah, that's why we have API subcommittees. I'm chatting okay. the TSC. Um, oh, sorry, let's directly go to our APIs. Maybe your favorite. Yeah, so we have the api.acrane.org. This for the um, Acrano uh, Business Application Developers APIs. And we also have another one called Portal. Yeah, it, we're still building that for the infrastructure APIs. So let me see if I can find Not this. We have a seven subcommittees, and API is one of them. Mm -hmm. like, uh, those API people like Doe from VMware, Jing uh, from Futureway, uh, they are, are participating in this. We have uh, two API work string. One is for uh, developer facing API work string. Uh, they provide, and also the uh, infrastructure API work streams. 
so we have the Edge API white papers for uh, these two exchange and okay. to leverage what we built for the uh, uh, blueprints. We can uh, have a look here. Like, um, yeah, you can see what's the technical challenges uh, and what's the enabler. See, um, we categorize the APIs like for general paths, for technology stacks, and for vertical industries. Yeah, so um, different people can find the sweet spot for them to contribute. Okay, yes, <laughs> that, uh, that makes sense. And then uh, I suppose the way this works is that uh, anyone that's interested, well, that's part of the community can can join those uh, those committees and participate to to the discussion. Yeah, it's uh, free for everyone. There's no such thing pay to play. Okay, and and once the the APIs are so to speak adopted by the the subcommittee, uh, how do how do you how do you try? What well, is there a specific mechanism to drive adoption in the blueprints and projects? Uh, I suppose it's not mandatory to to implement them, but how 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 do you proceed there? Yeah, it's bidirectional. So they actually uh, abstract and collect the APIs from different blueprint, and also they give the guidance to the blueprint. I can give an example of uh, one of the blueprints, like the public cloud edge interface. Uh, they provide APIs and SDKs between uh, Toco and the public cloud uh, providers, right? You can see each blueprint has an API documentation. It shows what like uh, APIs they are using. Mm -hmm. And some blueprints may use the similar APIs. And this provide the materials for, uh, for API uh, subcommittees to abstract where and presented in a more structural way in the white paper. So for the future coming blueprints, they can reference to. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. no problem. If uh, no more questions, I can stop sharing. Okay, last call, any questions? Okay, well, thank you, Tina. And if you don't mind, maybe you could uh, share a link to that deck uh, by putting it in the notes, or um, if you still can't edit that document, um, let us know and we'll put the link in there. Uh, I don't have a link, but I can, I can send the PDF to you or to Ding. Do I have your email address? Um, I'll, I'll send it to you on chat if that's okay. Sure, thank you. Yeah, and you want to talk while I shoot uh, Tina a chat? Yeah, so I don't know. Uh, question uh, the call for other items for the agenda. Anybody have anything you want to discuss today? If not, maybe we can, yeah, wrap, wrap this up 10 minutes early. Okay, it sounds like none, so I'll yeah. stop the recording, but thanks everybody for coming for future meetings. If anybody has anything they want to suggest, please put it on the agenda notes document. Um, if you get it there a little bit in advance, uh, we can try to get speakers, so it doesn't have to be something you present on. It could be just something you're interested in. And um, uh, we'll see you at the next meeting in two weeks, it's going to be on the China Eastern Europe time cycle and four weeks from now on at this time. So thank you, everybody. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank see you. Ya. Take care.